okay for the engineer tutorial video for the engineer let's go over the training first engineer exclusive training points are as follows vehicle repair tool this one allows you to repair friendly vehicles the more you upgrade the tool the faster it repairs anti-vehicle rpg ammo capacity this one increases the total amount of ammo you'll carry for your rpg each point increases it by two allows you to carry it up to up to six shots field repair vehicle this skill allows you to pilot or drive any vehicle and repair any nearby friendlies. It repairs at an inc in increments of 2% and repairs slower than a fully upgraded repair tool. Anti-vehicle mines. These anti-vehicle mines can be used both offensively and defensively, I will show you later in this video. <coughs> These mines are powerful and deal up to 800 damage against enemy armor. The Airburst Grenade Launcher. This weapon is an Airburst Grenade Launcher which can be set to detonate mid-air either above enemies behind cover or you can or you can blind fire them or hip fire them and they will detonate on impact. Useful against infantry, boosted can be useful against vehicles. Engineering Damage Assessment <coughs> This skill allows you to view the current health of any occupied vehicle. It shows the damage in increments of 3 or in 3 damage states. Full health is a, well close to full health, is, shows up, is shown up as a full triangle. Mediocre health is shown as a half full triangle. And critical on health or low on health is shown by an empty triangle. Or Name tag. This is revealed for both friendly and enemy vehicles, but will not reveal the damage state of an empty vehicle. Before I went to the weapon spot, I first want to tell you that any personal opinions expressed about the weapons belong to the person who said them, and everything else is their statistical values. The PP-2000. This is a default submachine gun for the engineer class. It has 22 bullets per magazine, and has two magazines extra, giving it a total of 66 bullets. Its deviation is pretty high, but its deviation return, as in the time it takes between the between uh, firing a bullet to the time the deviation has gone over, and you will, your bullet will pretty much be as accurate as it can be, is very low. In terms of damage, the PP-2000 is quite lacking, with the maximum amount of damage possible to be de dealt out is 50, and that is with headshots, and that is also at point blank. Its ranging is not bad though. Its medium range increment begins at 15 meters, and after 30 meters, well, your gun will do a little damage. At the lowest amount of damage you can possibly do, considered if an enemy also has body armor, is 8. The UMP-45. The UMP is a weapon that has slightly lower deviation and more stable deviation than other weapons, but its deviation return time is a little bit longer. So if you're firing fully automatic, this weapon might seem to de have higher deviations than others. In terms of damage, I personally find the UMP to be slightly de to be slightly lacking. It only feels like a slight improvement over the PP2000, especially at longer ranges where it actually can deal less damage than the PP-2000. It also has lower ranging than the PP-2000. The recoil though on this weapon seems to be a lot more stable than certain other weapons. Certain community members have dubbed this weapon the MP-5 Little Brother. The Uzi. The Uzi has quite large amounts of deviation, especially over long bursts. But, like the PP2000, its deviation return is quite fast. In terms of damage at close quarters, this weapon has lower damage than most submachine guns, or what one would expect from one. At longer ranges, though, this one has slightly higher damage. Although they are a little bit more randomized, at long range it can do anything between 10 to 14 damage statistically. 
Its ranging is also higher than certain submachine guns. The XM8C. The XM8C has generally lower deviation over longer bursts, but for that it suffers that its deviation return is not as fast as other weapons which have la larger deviation. Recoil wise, this weapon also tends to have a little bit more jump and recoil. In terms of damage and damage over range, it's quite decent, especially considering the fact that the P45 can do down to 8 damage. This one can do up to 15 damage at long range. Its ranging is also quite good, with long range beginning at 40 meters. The 9A91. This weapon has low deviation even over extreme long bursts, but for that it suffers that its deviation return seems to be a little bit slower. This weapon is also very effective on hit fire in terms of deviation and inaccuracy. For that, it also suffers multiple sacrifices. He sacrificed a rate of fire that other submachine guns have. This one has slower rate of fire. Its damage per second is not so impressive either, but that is because it sacrifices the rate of fire. In terms of damage over range, this one is on the top end of, of the spectrum. But its ranging comes very low and very short. The AKS-74U This weapon, also like the 9A91, is one of those that have slower rate of fire. This weapon though, has better deviation return than the 9A91, but for that, it has higher deviation of the burst. This weapon also boasts the highest amount of damage for any submachine gun at all ranges. But for that it also comes with lower range values. The MP5 Generally considered the jack of all trade submachine gun for the engineer class, this one has the lowest recoil of all, possibly one of the lower deviations, although a slightly slower deviation reset, and also decent damage. Its damage though is very lacking at close quarters, with damages between 20 and 23. This weapon is dubbed by members of the community as the OP5, symbolizing Overpowered 5. And that comes with it if used in a combination with, for example, like Sacred Sock, M145, Viper Mag, and a Precision Barrel or any other barrel of your choice. The MP7. This weapon recoils can considered, or at least compared, to that of a waving flag in a storm. That is because the sideways wobble and upwards drift of the recoil can be very random, hence a flag in a storm. Its damage though, especially at close quarters, is pretty high. That makes its weapon most suited at close quarters, especially with its recoil making long range fire difficult. The P90. The P90 is possibly the only submachine gun currently of the engineer class that recoils to the right. To a person who is not used to that, that may be a major set down for accurate aim fire. Deviation wise, this weapon can gain quite a lot over fire, especially over longer bursts. Its magazine of 50 can also mean that just trying to shoot will mean you won't hit shit. But its deviation over short bursts and its deviation reset over short bursts uh, and short times between bursts is very good. Its damage is almost identical to that of the UMP-45, suffering one damage less at close quarters. The PP-19 the PP-19's recoil and deviation combined with its faster rate of fire 
made keeping bullets on target over burst very difficult. Over burst of over 5, your 4 fifth and any bullet behind that most likely will not hit a humanoid target crouched possibly behind cover after shifting the meter. Its deviation reset is also only mediocre. And let us now see some of these skills put in action in game. The anti vehicle mine. The anti vehicle mine can be used both offensively and defensively. For offensive actions, you can dump them on dump them on top of enemy vehicles, or you can shoot them yourself. For defensive purposes, you can leave them in areas with high traffic, or you can leave them in an area where you think a tank is going to pass. You can also leave them on top of your own vehicles in undefended flat, where vehicles spawn. Certain players, when they see an anti-tank mine coming towards their vehicle, might bail out. Take this to your advantage and enter the vehicle. The anti-vehicle RPG. This weapon is provided to you by default and it comes with two shots without any training for extra ammunition. By default it can do up to 200 damage to tanks and it'll instantly kill jets. The anti-vehicle RPG will track onto targets that are marked with a tracer dart. Vehicles that are marked with a tracer dart will have a white box around them. This will also show their vehicle's location across walls and across the map. Again, certain players that have a damaged vehicle might bail out before you try to kill it. Use it to advantage and get in and steal it. The anti-vehicle RPG can also be effective against aircraft, especially when locked onto a tracer dart. The Vehicle Repair Tool This tool can repair any damaged vehicle that is either friendly or unoccupied. You cannot repair enemy vehicles, but neither can you destroy them with this tool. If you were observant, when that player entered the tank, you could see his name tag switch from a full triangle to an empty triangle. That is because the vehicle he then entered had low health. That APC there had a half full triangle. That means that the health of that vehicle was about medium. Another case of low vehicle health, the player gets out, I get in. Field Repair Vehicle What Field Repair vehicle does is that it allows you to be in a vehicle and repair any nearby friendly vehicles. Sadly you can't repair empty vehicles by doing this. Same here. I'm hit. I'm hit. Yeah, sentry. Person stand is dead. Help. Sentry person. Help. Simply by parking myself close to him, I will repair him in increments of two percent of his health. This skill will stack with anyone else nearby with this skill, and anyone with a vehicle repair tool. Tactics and Strategies The Engineer class is primarily designed as a close quarters combat and vehicle specialist. Whether or not an engineer should be driving a vehicle is... that is up for discussion. But I'm going to say an engineer driving, or at least gunning, <coughs> for a vehicle is one of the better. Of course, if you are co coordinating with a teammate, a teammate shooting the main gun of a vehicle, while well, the engineer repairs it while it is taking fire, is, is the best. The engineer class may also be quite useful spearheading an attack. His submachine gun can be very useful against infantry at close quarters, anti-vehicle mines can eliminate incoming vehicles, and the RPG can destroy anything that is farther away. The Engineer class is possibly the best support class in Battlefield Play for free. His submachine gun can help eliminate enemy infantry that wishes to get close to their armor. He can repair his own armor and his teammates armor. He can eliminate enemy vehicles both at long range and at short range. And his anti-vehicle mines can prevent enemies from stealing their own vehicles by repairing and can also deny enemies critical routes and roads for vehicles.